Hi, my name is Mike Smolinski, and I'm the managing editor of Neurology Now magazine, your trusted resource for brain health. Neurology Now is published by the American Academy of Neurology and Walters Kluwer Health. We're here at the seventh annual Parkinson's Disease Therapeutics Conference, sponsored by the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research and the New York Academy of Sciences. With me is Dr. Raymond Bartis of RT Bio Consultants. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Bartis. My pleasure. Um, my first question is, what area of Parkinson's disease research do you focus on in your work? It's primarily the major motor deficits, which are treated adequately when the disease is initially diagnosed, but uh, as time progresses, inevitably, these problems are undertreated. We're treating them and trying to treat them in such a way that not only will we improve the symptoms and slow the disease progression of the major part of the brain that's contributing to motor uh, deficits, but in doing so, perhaps actually will help reduce the, the other symptoms that are non-motor in nature with Parkinson's patients as well. Um, and what was the specific topic of your presentation here today? It was uh, focusing on uh, a recent clinical trial that we completed, as well as the program as a whole, which involved four different clinical trials, um, using a so-called double-blind uh, controlled paradigm. That is, half the patients got uh, treated with uh, a gene therapy product that's expressing a neurotrophic factor. Neurotrophic factors are proteins naturally occurring that have remarkable effects on neurons that are dying, um, such as restoring their function, protecting them from, from further degeneration, and helping them repair themselves. So using gene therapy, and that is a, a um, vector um, that contains that gene only, and putting it into the brain of part, people with Parkinson's disease, we hope to express that, that protein in high concentrations, and therefore induce genes that help those neurons heal. Mm -hmm. It was focused on a part of the brain that is known to be responsible for the serious motor deficits that Parkinson's patients have, and it's interconnected with other systems that are involved with other symptoms of, of patients or people with Parkinson's disease as well. Mm -hmm. And so the trial was intended to test whether or not patients to have a half the patients who got the treatment could do better than half the patients who didn't get the treatment. And of course, nobody knew who got what until the trial was long over. Right. And would you summarize a few of the main points of your talk or a few of the findings um, that you presented here today? Right. Well, the first thing we found with this trial, as well as the other three trials, contrary to concerns that exist in the, in the field, um, there were no safety issues with gene therapy. Um, it has a history, a long history in the past with other ways of, a, of, a, of using gene therapy that sometimes have caused side effects, but these nicely have all been resolved over the last 10 years um, by a number of different laboratories, including ours. So there were no problems with the patients. They all uh, fared very well. Um, the disappointing, disappointing part of the trial is we didn't see a um, measurable, clinically meaningful difference between those who got the treatment and those who got the control or sham surgery procedure, of a fake surgery, mm -hmm. and that was disappointing. Um, one of the more interesting aspects, though, is when we looked at patients who had been diagnosed less than five years from the onset of the disease, that is, an earlier stage progression, uh, we saw evidence that, on a number of different measures, that the treatment, in fact, distinguished between our mm -hmm. treatment treatment distinguished between that and sham, that is the patients that earlier diagnosed did better than those who were diagnosed 10 years or greater. And that suggests that if we're going to intervene with these treatments that are tended to really change the status of the um, degenerating neurons, sooner is far better than later. This makes sense if you think about it, because if the disease of course is too long, then it's really hard to fix things that are that badly broken. Um, that leads, I think, into my next question, which is, um, what does this mean for people with Parkinson's disease and their families? Um, what can, can patients and caregivers do to help this kind of research along? I mean, do, do we need more people in the early stages of Parkinson's disease to be joining trials, for example? Yes, um, that's a great question. And obviously, one of the things that means very um, 
frankly and sincerely is is a disappointment to the field in that many people were hoping that we'd see far more greater efficacy. Uh, going forward, certainly one of the messages is that we need to start treating even earlier. Uh, the Fox Foundation is doing a, a heroic job of trying to develop biomarkers and other means of measuring things that um, could provide some insight in terms of diagnosing earlier as well as measuring effects more effectively and earlier. And that will be a big help. So participating in trials like that, participating in trials that are, that are um, really experiments in a sense because we don't know uh, how effective they're going to be is important because one never knows where the breakthrough is mm -hmm. going to come. One side like that I think is interesting and perhaps of value to people with Parkinson's disease is the profound placebo response we see in, in each of our four trials. That is, patients, once they're admitted into the trial, whether or not they get the treatment or not, just going through the, the procedure of being enrolled in a study, meeting the doctors, having the possibility that they're going to get something that could be um, life-changing in terms of improving their status, actually induces a, a significant improvement in a condition mm -hmm. that progresses and gets larger over time and persists beyond a year or two. It's a remarkable observation, which leads me to believe that most patients, if not all patients, uh, people with Parkinson's disease, probably have the capacity to do much better than they currently are. Hmm. If somehow, whatever we're helping them dig into by enrolling them in a trial, they could find the means to do that themselves. Yes. I think that's a great incentive for people to, to join trials as well. Um, you know, wh whether you, you get the therapy or not, there's a good chance that you're you're gonna feel better or see some improvement in your symptoms. For we have patients who, I'm sorry, no, no. patients who enrolled four or five years ago who continue to do better than they did at the time of enrollment and they didn't get the treatment. It, it's, it's, it's remarkable. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for speaking uh, with us today, Dr. Bardis. My pleasure. Thank you.